Hello, Ms. Gig and Rotary. I am delighted to be here today to introduce Judy Hainer, our speaker for today. To give you a little background, Judy moved to Muskegon in 1970 mm -hmm. uh, from college at Eastern Michigan, where she earned her undergraduate degree in education. Uh, Judy initially made the comment to me, you can leave Muskegon, which she has done a few times, but you always come back, and she has, thank goodness. Um, Judy was a teacher in adult ed for six years. She got a master's from Western Michigan University in counseling. And then she moved to Arkansas, of all places, and was at the University of Arkansas. But um, she came back to Muskegon. She had, was doing an internship at Every Woman's Place and then became the director of that organization for five years when I met her. Uh, she then went to work for the Muskegon School System in adult education and training and became the assistant superintendent for nine years. The, at that time, the Muskegon Museum Art was part of the Muskegon School System and reported to her when she took a temporary job at the Art Museum because they needed a director and she was there for 14 and a half years. She <laughs> what she was doing. But Judy currently, at, she, she did retire after 14 and a half years and is now the project director of the Muskegon City Public Art Initiative, which is a program of the Community Foundation for Muskegon County. And we are talking with her today in her position as the director of this public art. And I know you've seen public art all over town and more and more all the time. And a lot of that is due to Judy Hayner. So let's hear from Judy. <laughs> hello, thank you, Nancy. And hello to our all of our Zoomers out there. This is a, a new format, I think, for us to try. But uh, Mike Bogus had asked me if I could talk about the public art of Muskegon, and I'm pretty delighted to do that. Um, so perhaps we want to start with why public art is important. I think about this a lot because, and I think about Muskegon and what the assets of this community are. And there are so many very unique assets in Muskegon that, that makes this that resilient, uh, what I always call, say, this scrappy little town that just keeps reinventing itself uh, and, and making itself anew. But interestingly enough, I think art's a part of that. When you look around our community, we have four dozen major works of public art throughout our, our urban center for the most part. And that's pretty unusual. And I don't know that I even understood how unusual it was until a truck driver who was bringing one of the birds into town when we did that project a few years back, um, one of those great big birds. And he says to me, this is a truck driver who drove here from the East Coast. And he says to me casually, he said, you have a lot of art around this town. At which point I kind of stopped and had to kind of take in a breath. And I thought, you're right, we do. Um, and it made me look more into what it is we have. And, and we do. We have four dozen works. Um, but here's what I think about public art. I think it helps to define Muskegon. And I think it helps to define us to ourselves. It helps us. It just becomes part of who we are, that we live in an environment where we see art when we're wandering around our community. And I think that's a great thing. Oh, no question. It is a great thing. And Judy, tell us a little bit about the history of our Muskegon Art Collection. It's really pretty significant, but interestingly and not ironically, it's just interesting. Where does it start? It starts where so much of Muskegon starts, which is with Charles Hackley. Um, as he, be, I know, it, you know, things all, the roads seem to always lead back to the lumbering and to Charles Hackley. Um, Charles Hackley was uh, continually inspired by Andrew Carnegie's charge to wealthy men that they should spend their money improving their communities. Hackley took that to heart. One of the things he, uh, he did so much, we know that, but one of the things he was interested in was that concept of public art. The very first work of public art in Muskegon is this Soldiers and Sailors, Sailors Monument in Hackley Park, and it was put in 1892. So 128 years ago, we had our very first 
work of significant public art by a national artist uh, with that monument. Following that were the other the other sculptures in Hackney <laughs> Park. So those were all the the very very early ones. Um, let me tell mm -hmm. you another thing that's interesting about the early works: the the McKinley statue that's in front of the Hackley Administration Building. It was put in in um, 1902, I think it was, and it was the very first tribute to William McKinley after his assassination. In fact, it was put in within seven months. And how did that happen so fast? The artist that did that sculpture, actually in this case, contacted Hackley. Hackley had already uh, commissioned him to do work at Hackley Park, which he had done. But he contacted Hackley and said he could do that. And so Charles Hackley supported the, that particular piece of art. So some of that early history, I think it's really interesting. That's terrific. What a legacy that history has left for this community. Um, but tell us a little more about the Downtown Arts Committee. Who, how did, was that formed and who was involved in that? The Downtown Arts Committee was actually formed in about 2005 by Pat Johnson. Um, and it was a part, uh, part and parcel of trying to figure out how we were all going to reimagine and redefine our downtown. By that point in time, the, the mall was shuttered, um, but still had a roof over Western Avenue. All of that work was, was starting to form as to how we were going to reimagine our community. And, the, and it was Pat's putting together a group of people to help advise on the idea of where does art fit into that mix. Um, and I was invited to be a part of that. Henry Matthews, the former director, one of the former directors of the museum over at Grand Valley, he was invited to be on it. Uh, we had some uh, community artists, the city of Muskegon, the county of Muskegon, but it's an advisory committee. We have no authority and we have no, you know, I don't know, we can't make we can make things happen but but not by uh, law by any means but it was really to advise the community foundation as the the new plan for muskegon was was coming together to look at where could we put art i mean so so wonderfully so right from the beginning that was part of the conversation well they've been doing you all have been doing such good work <laughs> as we see all over the community but i think it was important to stress that there public is involved, it's a large committee, and it's yes. not working or making these decisions. <laughs> no, no. And in fact, now I, that's actually the committee I report to. I was chair of the committee for a while, but then mm -hmm. when the new initiative, the Muskegon City Public Art Initiative came along, it's like, okay, I can't, I, you're now my boss. You're the people I report to. So, so that's what's happened at this point. So then um, the current art pieces, underway, the ones that have been installed and the ones that are coming. Would you talk about those? I will. Let me tell you a little real quickly how the Muskegon City Public Art Initiative came about. A uh, gentleman from Muskegon who, uh, who worked here. Now, he's not returned here, but his heart is still here. Patrick O'Leary was the uh, CFO for Seal Power and lived in Muskegon for about five years. He has then gone on to umpteen other things. Currently, is the chairman of the board of, CL of SBX. But his heart has never left Muskegon. And he called me after I retired, wanting to know what I was doing with my time. And then had this idea that he'd like to see and he would like to support another 10 significant works of permanent public art in, in the community. Um, so that's what gave birth to this initiative. He's behind it. Uh, he's behind it in the form of $25,000 as the beginning seed money for each of our projects. And the goal was to do 10 projects. So far, we've done three. Moxie and the uh, Mastodons on the Loose was our first project at the Lakeshore Museum Center. It was a wonderful project to start with because it was just so much fun. Um, and I think has been very successful. Those scavenger hunts have been great. Um, and then our second sculpture we just installed on June 30th, a city built on timber um, at Heritage Landing. And we are currently raising money for, I do lose track here. Uh, these were supposed to be like one at a time, like one every year or so. Uh, the third sculpture is going to be at the new roundabout that the city of Muskegon has put in at Lakeshore and Beach. And it's a sculpture that we discovered um, when we were doing the, um, the call for artists for the Heritage Landing piece. The artists that we've uh, now contracted with for the roundabout were one of the finalists when we finished that review process. Um, so that project is underway. 
um, and we're we're doing a crowdfunding project with the city on it's called patronicity and we need to raise fifty thousand dollars and when we do that we are matched by the michigan economic development council with another fifty thousand dollars and we're at almost forty thousand dollars today and it just started oh, wow. a few weeks ago so those are the three projects but yes there's more <laughs> yes and in fact, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of several of the pieces would you talk about some of the other things that the downtown arts committee has done of the, some of our our former pieces yeah, the former downtown pieces. arts the first the first piece that the downtown arts committee was deeply involved in was the richard hunt uh, muskegon together rising mm -hmm. again as we laid out the street as we saw we didn't do that we she had other people doing that but as we saw how the streets were going to be laid out and as they created the roundabout concept you know the most logical thing in my mind is that you put a work of art in the middle of a roundabout you don't put utilities in in roundabouts because then you can't do a thing new lesson i said to the city new lesson new rule um but that was the first big project that we worked on and richard hunt is a sculptor out of chicago world renowned has public art everywhere um, and has a studio in Chicago, but also one in Benton Harbor, African-American sculptor, uh, does phenomenal work. And I have to say that when we started talking to him, certainly none of us could have imagined quite what was going to happen. But having seen a lot of his work, Muskegon has one of his very best works in his entire collection, I think. Uh, so that was our first project was Muskegon Together Rising, but the Downtown Arts Committee has helped to shepherd through, raise money, think about uh, the Charles Hackley on the bench. Uh, John McGarry was a big part of that project, and he was on the committee at that time. Uh, we helped to support um, the efforts for Sales of Blaze, which is the tribute to the story of the Lyman Davis. It's a sculpture that's over by the Lake House. Uh, Buster Keaton, on Western Avenue is, is something that the Downtown Arts Committee kind of had a hand in. Um, the Arts Committee was very involved again as we thought about the downtown and how it should be, how we could maximize the impact of things we already had uh, or add to it. Um, the sculpture with stars that's now in front of the post office. Remember when they tore down that mall for the first time in 30, 30 years or whatever, we saw the, the post office, the federal building, which is a beautiful building actually, but we hadn't seen it for many, many years. Well, once that was exposed, that idea of the federal square came about and the splash pad, but then moving that sculpture called Sculpture with Stars by James Clover, we moved it from the site that was by the lake house and put it into a more public spot in front of the federal building. Uh, the Humpty Dumpty was a good companion piece for that. That was kind of through the, um, the downtown arts and then um, the turning point which is a tribute to um, the development of the the snowboard um, and then the boogie woogie bugle boy uh, we we assisted with uh, helping to raise money helped helping to to guide that development part of that project and working with um, Ari Norris on that so the downtown arts committees actually had their hand in supporting advising um, consulting and just you know kind of shaping some of these permanent works of art you know there's 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 community art there's public art and then there's these kind of things that a hundred years from now will still be here the focus i think of both the downtown arts committee certainly the focus of the muskegon city public art initiative now on these 10 works of art that i'm charged with trying to figure out how to make happen are that they will be here long after we will they will help define this community None of us, all of y'all watching this presentation, none of us will <laughs> be here. But those works of art will still be here. And what do you see coming on the horizon? Coming on the horizon very quickly, no pun intended, like a train, <laughs> um, is the um, Jerry Wiersema, fellow Rotarian for, I, for longer than I think any of us understand, has harangued the railroad companies um, and negotiated and worked with them and begged and controlled and finally talked them into allowing the communities to paint the two railroad overpasses on Seaway Drive. One is in the city, one is on the border of Norton Shores and, and uh, the city of Muskegon Heights. So he finally convinced them to do that. And then I stuck my nose into it. Says, as long as they're doing that, why don't we figure out a way to put art on there? whoops wait a second um 
So we've done that. Um, and those proposals, we, we're out for a, where am I? What ears? <laughs> we're out for a proposal that uh, all the proposals for the railroad murals are due next Friday, a week from this Friday. I've had a huge amount of interest. There was so much interest happening. We, we postponed the due date for a month. And I've now sent out materials to at least 40 artists. Um, and I'm just starting, I, I got one today that was kind of fun to look at. So that's that's happening. The Downtown Arts Committee will be reviewing those proposals in early August. The other uh, real active project right now is the Women's Division had approached the city and John Rooks, the developer, for to do a sculpture uh, in celebration of the 70 years of the organization of the Women's Division Chamber of Commerce. Those proposals have come in and we're in the process of reviewing those. So in the next few weeks, we're gonna have decisions made on a sculpture that will go at the convention center on the plaza adjacent to Shoreline Drive uh, next spring. And then we'll have a decision on the railroad murals that if we can pull all this off and have all the money we need for it, which I think we will, uh, that could happen as soon as September, this September, the painting of the murals. So those two things are pretty, um, pretty live projects right now. <clears throat> That is really exciting. And I have to mention, Judy has been a member of Rotary since 2007, I think. Um, oh, 2000. And, 2000. 2000. Yeah. I surprised myself. <laughs> I never, know. I always advertise myself, I, you know, truth and, and whatever. I'm not, a, I'm a bad Rotarian. I'm not a good Rotarian, no, but not. I've been around for 20 years. <laughs> Judy's been a good Rotarian and you have helped us with uh, several of our Rotary projects for which we're very grateful. Um, in fact, Thank you. Speaking of Rotary projects, we have the one in cooperation with the symphony with the yes. musical instruments. Would yes. you speak just briefly about that? Sure, sure. We are, we're getting close. Um, those, the instruments are ordered. In fact, they should be here by now. Um, and we're looking at an August installation of instruments at seven different sites downtown, Rotary Park, uh, the Johnny Harris Park in the Heights. Uh, so 31 instruments, seven different sites. The city of Muskegon is really going to help us with, with getting everything installed. It will be the largest insula installation of those kind of instruments anywhere, anywhere period. Um, so that should be really fun. And I think there'll be a, mm -hmm. obviously there'll be a, a, a celebration of getting all that installed and the symphony is going to, we'll do some music on the corners and yeah. That, so that's coming. That's, that sh they yeah. should be in in August and maybe it's a September dedication, but Rotary that's will know true. about that first. <laughs> when we can get together again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. That is wonderful. Is there anything else you want to say about downtown art? I think that we're very lucky in Muskegon to have the tradition of the arts, all of the arts. And I know that people that know me have known I've said this. When you think about what Muskegon makes, what makes Muskegon really unique, it's actually not the lakes and it's not the beaches. Everybody along this great lake has all that. What everybody doesn't have, in fact, what nobody has along this lakeshore, is that combination of things that we have in Muskegon. The art museum, the symphony, the civic theater, the historic library, the Lakeshore Museum Center, the, the, the ship museums, the LST, the, the Silversides. We have an amazing infrastructure of art and culture that does define who we are, whether we're aware of that or not. It helps to to add to who we are. And I just think we're so lucky about that. And why do we have all that? We have remarkably generous people who care about those things. There's a lot today to care about. There are a lot of, there are a lot of issues in, in, that, that people support and that, that need to be supported. I'm so grateful that, that people still want to support the arts because they do make a difference. They help define who we are. Um, and in Muskegon, I think that's really important. And by no the way, question. our public art, our public art takes no admission tickets. Everybody gets to enjoy it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we certainly are grateful to Mr. O'Leary. I'm not sure that people knew. Um, yeah. He, this was his, his idea. Part. Right. Really? It was actually, well, it, truly, I was this. not looking, I was not looking for this. This was his idea. This was, well, what are you wonderful. doing with your time? <laughs> Question well, that's to me. Another <laughs> example of the Muskegon area really uh, attaching it itself to different people. It does. That's, that's wonderful. Right. Thank you so much for all you've done oh. for 
the Muskegon area and uh, we're not a bad Rotarian. We're happy to have you. <laughs>